My name is Marcus. Uh, I'm an MTT coach at the Academy of Poker. And yeah, today's uh, free trial lesson will be about how to start winning poker in short terms. Let me quickly check that everything is running smoothly. Uh, whenever you have a question, just let me know. Uh, I'll also be watching on Facebook as we all also are showing the video there. And uh, yeah, I'll just wait a few more seconds so that some people that come in a few seconds later or a minute later will not miss out. <clears throat> okay, I think we can, yeah, I think we can just start now. As said, so I'm uh, covering YouTube and I try to also cover the Facebook page. Uh, if, it's, if it's okay for you, try to go on YouTube as... I will then see the chat or the questions or whatever your comments earlier. But now uh, let's just start. So there are common problems in poker. Uh, you're not sure which tournaments to, to go for. So which tournaments are the best ones? Like how much money do you really need? And that you're not sure where to play. There's sometimes you have restrictions depending on which country you live in, as not all poker sites are available everywhere. But also sometimes according to the level, like yeah, the level of the players, for example, how good, how bad are they, how many people are playing there, and of course, like how much time do you have? And also, which is nowadays really, really important, uh, how to work with software in general. Um, there are so many different softwares you can use and it's really important that you know about them and at best that you know how to use them and how to work with them so you can study on your own and become a better player. Uh, where you can find useful information is another important thing because sometimes it might be harder, it might be easier. Uh, I will show you different sources of information to make your poker play better. And in general, how can I grow faster? Uh, by the way, if I have to have some coughing, I'm a little cold, so uh, please excuse me for that. Just in uh, now already, if if I have to cough. So, why do you play poker? There's in general two things for that. Um, first thing is entertainment, and the other thing other thing is you do it as a source of income, and that's what general generally a poker pro does. Uh, if you do it as entertainment, make sure that you admit it to yourself. Um, because if you think you, uh, if you're not sure you want to do it for entertainment, but you just want to do it professionally, it's there's going to be some problems around that because uh, you have to put more time in it. And if you just do it as entertainment, you mostly don't put that much time in it as a professional player would do it. So don't worry about it. It's not a big thing. A lot of players do it for entertainment. They just put in a few dollars uh, during the weekend, play some of the bigger tournaments, and if they hit a hit a big jackpot, like if they make the final table of some tournament, they make some money. If not, it's not a big problem. It's not a big part of your uh, of your income, and it's really just as you would go into the cinema or something like that. <clears throat> so, as I said, it should not be a big part of your normal money because uh, you shouldn't play for your last money uh, poker should as I said if you do it as an entertainment it should be like going to the cinema or going into a pub with friends or something like that so you wouldn't you would probably not do that if you don't have the money to do it right so don't play for your last money all in all just have fun especially when you're playing live for example 
you know, if you're new friends, you maybe have a beer or two and you having big laughs. If you bluff someone, you show it and everybody is having a good time. So as said, just enjoy the game. If you do it for income, same thing. You have to admit it. It's your job. So the only money you're making comes from this. So work on your game and become a better player every day, every hour, every minute, every second. So whenever you're not playing, uh, as I said, you should have, if you do it professionally, it's at least a normal nine to five job. So normally as a poker player, especially if you do professionally, you probably play more because you're gonna play on Saturdays and Sundays mostly, especially on Sundays, as we all know, though there are the biggest tournaments. <clears throat> so work on your game. If you're not playing, if you have days where you're not playing, use them to study. So if, for example, if you're using some poker software, you can there see hands you've played, for example, and then you can go through that to see, okay, what, what mistakes did I make? How can I make it better? And yeah, use, inf use information you get, and I will come to that in a few minutes. Also, a big thing, of course, is the time difference, um, meaning how much time do you have to spend on poker? There's, for example, we now, I do now choose, just uh, chose two different numbers from three hours to like 10 hours a day. If it's just three hours, for example, if you have a nine to five job and you still want to play poker almost every day, you can do it, you know, get your, eat your dinner, start at maybe seven and play from seven till 10, something like that, if you have the time for it. If your girlfriend, your wife, for example, allows it, or if you're, you don't have a girlfriend yet or a boyfriend, of course, you can use that to play. I mean, it's your it's your time. You can put it the way you want it. Uh, in that case, I would suggest you to go for turbo tournaments or multi-table sit and goes. Uh, they have a specific amount of players, especially the multi-table sit and goes. Most, for example, on PokerStars, uh, probably most of you know like the $2.50, 180 player um, multi-table sit and go or this 350 rebuy. And they even put in the information of the tournament, they put how long they usually last. So you know how long you're gonna play. You put in five, four, maybe 10 tournaments of those kinds, and you know, okay, they're gonna last three hours. Perfect, that's exactly the time I have. <coughs> I'm gonna go for that. If you, on the other side, going as a poker pro, and you're trying to make money out of all these things, then, uh, by the way, sorry, let me open it. Uh, then, as I said, you can go for normal speed tournaments. So uh, you can be sure. Sorry, that just stop. Okay, so there we are. Uh, so then uh, you can be sure that you have enough time and you can play regular speed tournaments. Uh, if you played them, I mean, you know, they take longer and they might go for between six hours but up to 10 or 11 hours so uh, if you start at 10 a.m for example you know you have the time to go for those tournaments if you do it in the evening and you think okay i would probably play until 11 or maybe 12 uh, but suddenly you play the regular speed tournament you make the final table boom it's 4 a.m and yeah the next day of work gonna be really hard so choose them wisely <clears throat> uh, types of MTTs is, of course, another thing. Sorry. So there are uh, different kind, kinds of tournaments. You you may have heard of those. Uh, there's the freeze out tournament. Uh, in those tournaments, you pay the pay, pay you pay your buy in one time, and you get a chip stack for that. If you bust that tournament. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we've all been there. <laughs> uh, if you bust the tournament, you're just out. And that's it. You paid a fee once, it's over. Knockout tournaments, which are really, really popular to a lot of people. You pay the buy-in fee. It's mostly like a freeze-out, but half of your buy-in is a knockout. So it's a bounty. Whenever somebody busts you, he gets this amount of money. If you bust someone, you get the amount of money. So this way, uh, in general, it's after you busted four players. <clears throat> You're already making 
making or you already got the money back you paid for this tournament which is really nice because of course there's just so many different kinds of plays and a lot of people just want to try to get to get the bounty uh, then we have satellites satellite is a tournament where you can qualify for a bigger tournament and in this case it doesn't matter if it's online or if it's live uh, you've probably all he heard about chris moneymaker uh, what he did he qualified through satellite on PokerStars for the World Series of Poker. And we all know he won the tournament and started a huge boom of poker. <clears throat> those, those tournaments are running a lot of times. For example, for the WSOP, they're running on 888 poker, but also for EPTs, WPTs, you have a lot of qualifiers to go for. But also if your bankroll, which is the money you have to play, uh, is not that big and you normally don't go higher than maybe two, three dollars, you can still use normal buy-in tournaments with one, two dollars to then qualify for maybe a $22 tournament, for a $55 tournament, or maybe even for a $100 tournament, which would be now the Sunday Million, for example, or other tournaments on Party Poker with a huge guaranteed price pool. Uh, last but not least, we have rebuy tournaments, which uh, normal they work almost as a freeze-out, the only difference is if you bust out, you can just pay the entry fee again and you get another stack. This is for a certain amount of time. And after that, you can add on so you can pay the amount again and you get some more chips. After that, it's just like a normal freeze out. But in this way, you can try to build to build up your stack a bit more because people will play a bit more loose. If they have more money, they will just go for it and they don't care if they have to rebuy. <clears throat> also, the price pools there are mostly a bit bigger because there are so many rebuys and add-ons. Uh, you heard me talking about bankroll management a bit. What is it exactly? So bankroll management is something to help us to protect ourselves from losing our bankroll. Uh, minimum amount of buy-ins, which means, as I said, if you play in general anything up to $5, meaning from $0.50 cents to $5, and your average buy-in is let's say two dollars you should have have at least 200 buy-ins so two times 200 you should have at least 400 dollars for that but only if you really stick to the average buy-in <clears throat> if you play turbos and hyper turbos as i said if you don't have that much time every day then your buy-in should be higher as you see at least 300 buy-ins the thing is the structure of those tournaments is faster so you don't have that many chips after some time and the variance there is bigger so as as i said as the the stacks are shorter in average so the average chips chip stack is smaller than with a normal turbo uh, with a normal speed uh tournament it is hard to uh yeah you're gonna be all in more more times and as i said if you have a flip a 50 50 situation you're going to lose that some time. And in hyper turbo tournaments, this is going to happen more often because you are all, all in more at, at more um, situations. So therefore you have to have more buy-ins to be able to, uh, yeah, to work uh, or to keep that, to keep uh, enough buy-ins to play those tournaments. Uh, a little, yeah, just a little background about me uh, so you can get to know me a little bit. Uh, I'm from Germany. I grew up close to Bremen and a few, actually like one and a half years ago, uh, I moved to Prague and after working for some other companies, I decided to go to the Academy of Poker. They were looking for a poker coach and I've been playing poker for almost, yeah, for more than half my life. Actually, I started when I was 12 playing with friends and I've been playing uh, online since, uh, eight years now since I'm 18 and yeah I decided um as you see <laughs> uh, I because being a poker coach here is more about online um, poker and the thing is I like online poker more uh, as you see uh, I'm more happy sitting in front of the PC because there's yeah there's certain things about that first uh, you can just play more tournaments um, in my case, I have two monitors in front of me. If I'm going for the big grind, if I go for a huge Sunday session, I'm playing up to 
sometimes 20, 20 tournaments, but in general it will be it's between uh, eight and sixteen. Depends on when I when I uh, like at which stage I am and yeah how many tournaments they are running. So and if I bust in one tournament, not a big deal. I have fifteen others to go. So of course if it's a big one, you might have a small. Eh, that's unnecessary, especially if you were in front, but you have so many other things to do. If you ever go into, into the casino, uh, you play one tournament, which has mostly a bigger buy-in, of course, as like my average buy-in is something below like $10 roughly. And if I go into, into, uh, into a casino, like for me, the King's Casino in Rosvadov is pretty close. Uh, the tournaments there have 100, 200 euros, which would normally be like 20 tournaments I play online. But if I bust the live tournament, I'm just out and I can I can do nothing. So I really like to stick to uh, online poker. And yeah, this is roughly me. <laughs> My apartment looks a bit nicer. There's not that many servers sitting there. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just the way it is. Also, I can use my holder manager and use this software so I have information about my opponents and that helps me to make decisions so that way I'm able to play more tables. Let me quickly check a short things. So that I'm also covering everything on the other side. Not that I don't, so I don't want to miss out on anything from the chat. Uh, so if you have anything, I just want to make sure that I see everything here. As it's important that I answer all your questions. So therefore, I'm just quickly checking everything. Yeah, but it seems to be fine. So uh, let's move on. Uh, how how does online poker work? Normally, I don't wear this hat, <laughs> by the way. Uh, but yeah, so what you do, you play tournaments or you play cash game, whatever you want. By doing that, you generate rake. Rake is the amount of money that the casino or the online poker room, in our cases, because we talk about playing online, just with withholds when I play. So for example, if I play an $11 tournament, $10 go into the price pool and $1 is the casino fee, so the rake. And yeah, this goes to the poker room. And there, you see the different kinds of rooms. And for that, uh, yeah, they provide the services of the software, of the tournaments, and they, they like in this way, they allow you or they make it possible to play on their sites. And of course, sometimes uh, you might have heard about some things. Uh, some sites give you some of that rake back if you play a lot of them. Other sites don't do that, don't do it that much. Uh, depends on how much you play, if you really care about it, if it makes sense to go to some sites because of that. And yeah, we're here now. Uh, where can you play? So as you already saw, there are some th some sites. You know about the bigger ones. Uh, I th don't think I have to to say that much about PokerStars. Uh, they do have the best software. It has just the highest quality. Uh, they do have the highest price pools in their tournaments. Uh, we just ended with the World Championship of Online Poker. Uh, millions and millions of dollars were guaranteed there. Almost every, t I think every tournament had more, uh, has had a bigger prize pool than the, the one that was guaranteed. And you just have a wide range of tournaments. Even if you don't like No Limit Hold'em, if you'd like to play older games like Raz, Stud, PokerStars is offering them. On the other side, um, because of that huge prize pools, of course, it dr just draws the attention of the best players. So the average player on PokerStars is pretty good. Also, the average field size, uh, average average field size, sorry, is pretty big. So if you used to play one two dollar tournaments, you're gonna have a few thousand players in almost every tournament. And then even if you are a good player, 
it's hard to to beat um, also the <clears throat> the variance there. Uh, but all in all, like PokerStars is a really good side to play on. Uh, also, we have Party Poker here. Uh, the advantage there is that they have quite big overlays. Uh, overlays means they guarantee a certain amount of money for that tournament. And if it's not reached, they still pay it out. For example, uh, you have a $1,000 guarantee tournament. The buy-in is $11. We know $1 is rake, so $10 go into the prize pool. Meaning if 100 players register for the tournament, the $1,000 prize pool is reached. If now only, let's say, 90 register that would mean normally there's only $900 in the price pool but because they guaranteed $1000 they still pay it out and party poker was running or is still running a lot of events and competitions and they offer tournaments where the overlays are pretty big so you get more more value or you get more money for the money you paid also, the rake pick system is pretty nice. Uh, if you play a lot, you can get rake pick up to 40%. So if you played a lot and paid maybe 5,000 euros or dollars in rake back, uh, in rake, you get like 2,000 back of that, which is pretty nice. I mean, if it's just like a, the cherry on the top, if you made money, uh, this is of course nice to have, but you already made money. On the other side, if you lost money, then this is of course even more important to cut your losses. Uh, also, the average field size on Party Poker is rather low. As we said, they have quite some overlays and the players are in general not that good. Also, they offer the Party Poker Live Dollars now, which I think is a really, really nice thing. Uh, you can just yeah, win that, win that money, you have it stored in an account and you can use it for live tournaments. For me, for example, it's really nice because the King's Casino is offering almost every tournament uh, is, is um, possible for me to play with Party Poker Live Dollars. Uh, one small disadvantage uh, next to the quality of the software is the unstable schedule. So there are quite a lot of changes and uh, also they don't have the possibility to use software anymore to track your play. Uh, number three is here, 8 at 8 poker. Uh, same thing, average field size is pretty low and the play players are in general rather weak. Also, as I already talked about, you have the you have the um, opportunity to qualify for the WSOP and that's mostly the dream of every poker player to play there one time. Uh, the advantage is that the guaranteed prize pool is rather small there in most tournaments because they don't have that many players. Uh, now it's, it's not working anymore. So they, sorry, uh, it's not tracking anything in party poker anymore. They have their own system where you can look on the website, for example, where you play, but they uh, abandoned softwares like Poker Tracker and Holder Manager 2 for Party Poker. Uh, you will, if you open it now, you would see that the pop-ups or the the huts, so the heads up head up display, is not shown anymore in Party Poker because they not allow that anymore. Uh, last but not least, Natural Eight. Uh, this is GG Poker Network. Um, I'm playing on that side too, next to Poker Stars and sometimes Party Poker. Uh, by the way, um, I like. I really like the, again, it has uh, rather small average field size and uh, through my experience, I can say that the players are not that good in general. And they also have many events and they run quite a lot of competitions uh, like rake races where the more you play, the more you can, you go up through a leaderboard and you can win quite some, uh, quite some money or there's a tournament leaderboard almost every week. And when you win some tournaments, you get points and then you can get some money back on top. Also, the rakeback system is pretty good. I think if you play really a lot, uh, you can even get more than 100% rakeback. Uh, disadvantage here again, the price pools are not that big and the schedule is not that big as well. So especially if, you, if you're playing um, small stacks or micro stakes, there's not that many tournaments on natural light. Uh, but yeah, all in all, I still like, I really like the, the website and, but again, it's up to, it's up to you where you want to play and where you feel, yeah, the most, the most safe or where you feel the best, where you think, okay, I'm running better here or something like that. It's up to you. Uh, I was talking about software quite a bit. Those are just some examples uh, that you can use. 
as I said, holder manager and uh, here um, Jordan already knows about it, I guess. So holder manager, just the best tool you can have. It tracks all your plays, it tracks every hand you play and it shows you all the stats throughout your play. So if you think you run bad, you can look it up and see if it really is the case or if you just feel that way because you only remember the bad uh, the hands you lost. A hand to note is another tracker which can be used and is really nice. Uh, also you have calculators, meaning it can show you uh, if decisions you made were good or, or not good. Um, Flopzilla, for example, uh, is a tool where you can show different hands or different ranges of hands and show uh, the equity they have and if you could bet there or if you shouldn't on specific boards uh, so you can just train and study if for example you have a hand where you're not sure if you should have bet or not and then you can use flopzilla uh, to see if it was the right decision or not and uh, for example those those softwares uh, like flopzilla like ic miser 3 as well uh, we will talk about those in our individual lessons, for example, or in group lessons as well. I will show you a bit about those softwares. Um, as I said, ICMizer 3 shows you decisions if you should have pushed or fold uh, in ICM spots. ICM is the independent independent chip model. So it calculates uh, even if there's also more money, if there's money jumps involved. So if you make another another position higher, if, you, if somebody busts before you, uh, then you get more money and it puts that uh, in in uh, perspective as well and shows you uh, decisions if they're yeah if they're plus ev so if the expected value of that decision is positive or negative uh, last but not least uh, we have the gto solvers uh, gto means um game theoretical optimum so the best way possible to play and there you have simple post flop and simple pre flop so uh, i think that says it mostly the one solves, tries to solve situations that happen after you see the flop. The other one solves situations that were that are happening before you see the flop. Uh, how can you learn poker? There are four different uh, ways to go for, and let me go through them pretty quickly. So you have books, of course, uh, which I think nowadays are a bit overdue. Uh, you just have the internet you can look up everything there uh the worst thing would be to just go like you could still use ebooks for example a lot of uh, a lot of poker books are available as ebooks as well so you don't have any you will not have any problems to go through that uh if you start from the bottom i think you can of course go for some some books uh, me for example i the last one i read was uh was I think it was from Phil Galfond was a tournament uh, poker. Then I read some from Gus Hansen. And um, the last, what did I also read? Yeah, I forgot about it. Never mind. <laughs> but I had enough books uh, that are up to date. The thing is, of course, if they're out for one year, the game has changed quite a bit already. So be aware that if you read it, it might be outdated as the game is evolving all the time, of course. Uh, you have VODs, so you have videos you can watch on YouTube, such like our videos uh, on our YouTube channel, which of course, feel free to subscribe there uh, to not, not miss out on those videos. And uh, yeah, they show you analysis of games, for example, maybe an analysis of a Sunday Million Final Table or of some other tournaments, or maybe they talk about just a specific hand where they go through all the solvers, all the softwares and show you why the decision they made was wrong, was right, and what they should have done different, maybe. Uh, some good book. Yeah, so, oh yeah, now I got it. Uh, it was the latest book from Chris Mormon, by the way, who's, he won, the, I think, the most triple crowns online, meaning he won three tournaments in one week on three different poker sites. Um, but to start with, you can always go with the uh, Super System, or you can get some old books from uh, Doyle Brunson. Daniel Negriano has a book. You can use the one from Dan Harrington, which is always a good basis. I think that one aged pretty well uh, as well. Let me maybe just give you a link to that.
Oh, you got 15 books. Nice. Yeah. I mean, then I probably don't need to uh, recommend you anymore. You probably read most of the good ones. And I said, I'm, I'm not going, I'm not working with books that much. As I said, I read the, I read a one from Gus Hansen where he played uh, the Aussie Millions. I had, uh, have a book from Chris Moorman. And uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I will, I will look up something. Uh, for now, I have to just continue with that, but uh, I can, I can uh, look it up and. Uh, yeah, we we can we can look at that at that at another time, uh, but I think as I said there's just so many where you also about mindset and stuff. So I think those are pretty pretty uh, important as well. But uh, yeah, let's move on. So number three, forums. <clears throat> you all know probably two plus two or maybe poker strategy. Uh, that's one forum that I uh, yeah that I worked with quite a lot or that I was active on for a long time. Uh, they're not used that much anymore. As there's, as I said, there's live streams now. There's Twitch. There's YouTube where we we stream on both sides. There are big streamers, uh, and there's just yeah, all the questions that you normally put in a forum are asked there. So uh, yeah, they're also a bit outdated. And last but not least, you can go for coaches, and this is of course where we come in as well, as uh, yeah, we offering coaches. And I think it's uh, <clears throat> even though it it might be more expensive than the other three things. Of course, VODs are mostly free. Books don't cost that much and give you a lot of pages to go through, but coaches just really, they center the information they give you and they give it to you in the best and fastest way. So when you have one hour, for example, with one of our coaches with me, with Leo Don Leon, you just get so many insights because we can tell you what's right, what's wrong. We've studied all that stuff for a long time. And uh, yeah, therefore, just want to let you know about the individual courses and individual lessons you can get with me. Uh, I, we have a fitting structure for every type of player. Is it, for example, like a Jordan, if he is transitioning from a fun player or from a entertainment player into a pro player, we can help you because I did the same thing uh, just, yeah, not that far ago where I had to transition from just doing it as fun into making it or playing it in a professional way to, yeah, to earn money, to make a living out of it, right? So that's what we do. And it always depends on which level you are, what you need, and we can provide you there the best structure to go could go with you on a certain distance to make you a profitable player. Uh, we also, or I will work on your needs. Meaning if you say, I have always problems with people three betting me all the time. I don't know what to do, or I don't know what to defend in the big blind. I always make, make mistakes there. We will just jump into exactly that hole. So, we will go through all the spots where you may where you're not sure where you may make mistakes. I can show you what is the best way to to handle those situations and to avoid making mistakes. Also, if you're not familiar with software, as I said, because it's really really important, uh, especially like the Holder Manager, I can show you how to use them properly, how to know what the things they show you mean. So, uh, if the head of display from uh, holder manager shows you a specific number uh maybe you don't know what this number means i can tell you what this number means and if it's good or not and if it's bad how you sh what you need to do to change it but that's just a small excourse uh how can you grow so let let's take me as an example uh you you see me here playing for some time uh this is Actually, more than 7,000 tournaments I played uh, from the day I started. I said I haven't played, I haven't been playing that much. I started when I was 18, won a big tournament, but then, as you see, throughout like almost five, five and a half thousand tournaments, I didn't make any profit. I mean, I didn't lose anything in the end, but I didn't make profit, and that's not the way it should be. So even after 2,000 tournaments more, I'm still at the same level. Uh, then. I started using programs like Flopzilla, like the IC Miser, like Holder Manager, 
uh, simple preflop, and so on and so forth. And yeah, it helped me improve my play. And since then, if you see it, the same amount, seven and a half thousand tournaments, and going from roughly six thousand dollars in profits, I managed to go up to twenty-one thousand dollars in profits. This is roughly where I am now. There's been some more tournaments coming through, but as you see, uh, it really, really helps. I watched. Uh, I started watching many videos. I started, as I said, I read some more books. Uh, I went. I went through. Yeah, so much theory. Um, and you can see it really helped. Of course, as you see, there were times like at the beginning, I still lost some money and I was I was a bit annoyed. But yeah, then bam, there's the there's the big score. Nice. And then as you see, it goes up. And of course, you see like here between eight and 10K, there's like 2000 tournaments I played where nothing happened, but I still kept improving. So in the end, the curve goes up and that's the most important thing. And that's something you have to remember that it is in the, it's a game of the long run. And yeah, even though you see that I had like some struggle here, I was actually playing plus minus null, plus minus zero uh, for another 2000 tournaments because I've may have, I made some mistakes probably. I maybe wasn't run, hasn't been running that good, but then again, there's the next score. So if you keep improving, it will show. And yeah, uh, how can you, grow faster. So we're almost at the end of our today's free lesson. And yeah, our Academy of Poker course is your solution. As I said, again, in the individual courses uh, that I provide for you, we also have uh, some nice group lessons here where we talk about strategy for MTTs. So you saw the different kinds of tournaments that are, um, that are been, have been, or are able to been playing, to be, to be played. <laughs> And we show you how to go through those tournaments, what to do in those tournaments. Uh, we also provide you with the basics of the poker math, what are outs, what are odds, what are pot odds, what is fold equity, and so on. Then, as I said, we will show you uh, some stuff of the poker software. I will explain my head-up display, for example. I will explain how to use the holder manager correctly, how to use uh, Flopzilla, the IC Miser, and yeah, simple, simple preflop, everything you can imagine. And last but not least, we will do a nice little hand review uh, where we, yeah, you sent me your hand. Uh, I already did it once with uh, Jordan, I think. Uh, you sent me your hands and I will just go through the hands, say what you did good, where you had some problems, where you had made some mistakes. So you have already something to start from. And again, then we have also some uh, individual lessons, two individual lessons, where we can either just go through some more hands or you will be playing and I will just like look you over the shoulder and we can analyze the stuff afterwards. Yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> and yeah, again, in the individual lesson, as I said, we can go through some hands, we can look, we can uh, have a look at your, your problems. If you have something that you're not sure about, we can we can look it up, see where the problems are and already start digging to make them go away and make it easier. Uh, also, yeah, I said the live session, I will look over your shoulder. You play something, you just tell me your thoughts on the hand, because of course I'm not allowed to tell you anything during the hand, but I can tell you afterwards. Okay. I think this could have been, this would have been better. This was a clear mistake. This was a really nice play and so on. And last but not least, again, some software questions. So uh, now what the price? Uh, of course, there's a lot of stuff for you. I mean, you will also get some charts uh, to how to, what to raise preflop, for example, and, and what amounts to raise and so on. But good thing is that the poker room you're gonna play in will pay for that education. Uh, you just have to ask one of our managers. You've been already in contact with them, I'm sure and they will tell you about the procedure, how it works. And yeah, this is already it for today's uh, trial lesson. I hope you liked it. And I also hope to see you tomorrow, actually on Thursday, because tomorrow I will, it will not be my part. But anyway, 
one of our other great coaches uh, to see you tomorrow for our premium lesson if you decide to go for our course and as I said uh, you don't even have to pay for it because you just have to play on the poker room and then the poker room will pay for your education so uh, let me just give you a few more seconds if you have any questions I will also have uh, just a short look if there are any questions on some other sites here if there's anything on Facebook for example or on Twitch uh, but other than that I just hope you enjoyed this lesson Uh, you mean with the with the poker room with the education uh, as said you have to talk to the managers about that uh, we are in touch with quite a lot of different sites but um, i'm not sure if every site is covering that uh, also depends on where you're from of course uh, if you're f yeah depends on which country you're from as i said there because there are so many uh, restrictions or there are some restrictions in some rooms Uh, so it works like this that as I, I talked about the rake and in this case we have the the agreement with the com uh, with the poker site that uh, you deposit some money there and you just play so if you go for I don't know if you go for fifty hundred dollars and you play and you have to um, you have to create a, a certain amount I'm not I don't know about the exact amount but you have to uh, create a certain amount of rake and after you reach that goal, uh, the, poker, the poker site will then pay the course for you to us. Yeah, that's like the, the, the easiest way to explain it. So it's just about you playing, creating rake for the website, uh, for the software, for the poker site, and then they pay the, like for your education. So they pay the price of the course to us. I hope that is uh, in some way understandable. Like, of course, I'm uh, I don't know the exact, uh, as I said, the exact numbers of everything. But uh, yeah, that's that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, cheers to, cheers to you too. Uh, and again, the managers know about how everything works. They will probably also tell you about the exact numbers, so how much you have to play or how much rake you have to produce for that. But uh, Uh, I started playing a party poker before one week with VPN, so right now I ask me for proof, to official proof, though from my country I still have a chance to play. Oh, really? Party poker is not available in your country? Okay. Um, I am not sure. Like, if they see that it's not allowed in that country and your document is from that country, then it will probably be hard to continue there. Uh, but maybe again, I think the managers also help you with setting up the um, the account and so on. So uh, that could be another question for them. If they don't know it, uh, let me know. You can just write to uh, you can just write to uh, my email. You already, I think you already sent me one email. Uh, but let me actually, I will just give you my email address quickly. So if there's any any problems. Here, there you go. So if there's any, like first try to solve it with the managers because uh, they know what to do in most cases. Uh, and if there are still some problems, we can go through it. But in general, I think, okay. I mean, if you have a document, you can probably use it, but uh, Again, I 
don't want to tell you anything because I'm not completely sure. I haven't had uh, that problem so far. So therefore, uh, maybe yeah, as I said, I, uh, first, please just uh, try to go to our uh, managers for that. They can, uh, they will tell you about uh, about the things you could maybe do. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, if that's not working, I will I will look through some stuff. But uh, yeah, you can maybe you can use that document. Yeah, I think first uh, just write to one of our managers, so uh, they will help you with that. Uh, I just I just know that they also helped some other people to set up accounts, uh, so I think they might have a solution for that, or they can at least offer you maybe another website to. Uh, or another poker software to play from. Uh, as I'm not, uh, you were, f were you from Bulgaria or Hungary or so? Uh, so as I, said, I don't know what is possible in those. I know one of our managers, like the Poker Academy ma um, manager. Okay. Uh, yeah, they should. They should contact. They uh, will contact you if you are uh, going to our website. So you can uh, just go on that website, and then you already have one pop up. This is one of our managers, and if you say, "Yeah, cool, I'm interested in uh, going for for uh, the." The courses and I would like the poker uh, the other software to pay for that uh, they will tell you how it works so on which sites you can play and how everything uh, works with depositing the money or if you already have money on there that you just need to play and so on <clears throat> um, it might definitely make sense to do that uh, there are some some reasons really because uh, one thing is for example if if you're a professional poker player uh, of course you have to pay taxes for example so I know a lot of German pros that moved to Austria or to uh, to England for example or to Scotland uh, just to pay less taxes because the taxes in Germany are pretty big and also if if there are some restrictions that maybe for you, if, for example, if, if party poker is not allowed, uh, then it would make sense maybe to move to a country where it is allowed so you can play there. <clears throat> um, and yeah, there are different reasons, especially like if you don't have, uh, yeah, if you're not, if you don't care where you live and it's just about grinding, I mean, you could also play from Indonesia or Thailand or whatever because they have nice uh, beaches and the weather is nice uh, just as, as you want to do it. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, as I said, I will uh, just when you go to the website and say you're interested or uh, Jordan, you probably have should have also have some uh, should have already had some Party cannot. Ah, okay, sorry, I got I overread uh, your other one, or didn't arrive. Ah, there you are. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, as I said, we have other sites, so you can also go to if eight 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 works for you. Uh, we are always, at least, tr we will always try to contact some poker sites if we are not yet partner with them or have the agreement with them. Uh, if you can. Yeah, if you tell us a site that you would like to play on, we will try to get in contact with them to make something happen for that. As said, there are so many countries in Europe, all over the world, uh, and yeah, so many restrictions. I mean, you can, if players are from Spain, from France, from Portugal, they can just play on the Poker Stars for France, Spain, and Portugal, and not on the normal one. So that's again another web, another software then, and so on. As I said again, it, um, I'm not I'm not completely sure about uh, which sites we're partnering up with, as they are changing their policy quite often, so it's always updating. Uh, just again, go 
just go on our website um, and start uh, start chatting with uh, with my one of our managers. Uh, if you open this the website, uh, you should just already have uh, the pop up there of of one of our managers, and yeah, then they will tell you with which websites this works or not. So uh, yeah, I think that that helped you uh, enough. Uh, again, uh, tomorrow we will. Uh, start or continue with our uh, group courses uh, we will talk about the basics of uh, MTT so strategy for MTTs different kinds of different kinds of tournaments how to approach them and what to do in those tournaments uh, again thanks for watching today um, if you have some if you have some more questions you can also ask them on Facebook for example or put down in the comments because this video will probably be re-uploaded. Uh, we go through those comments, uh, yeah, in a frequent in a frequent uh, way. So I can just then maybe either me or some of my colleagues will give you the answer you're looking for, hopefully. But again, uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on the upcoming videos as I'm producing quite a lot of videos for uh, the channel. And again, I hope to see you in the uh, upcoming group sessions and probably then also for individual lessons. Uh, and yeah, let me help you to make you a profitable poker player. Yeah, cheers to you, Matt. <laughs> okay, guys, see you, see you again. Have a good evening.